Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6. Today we are going to be playing with two mods, Secret Act's simple UI adjustments, which makes some simple quality of life adjustments to the UI. We'll also be playing with the Potato Settler mod, which makes settlers cost 1,000 population, sorry, not 1,000 population, 1,000 production and 5 population, which means you need a 6 population city and a whole bunch of production to get new settlers. However, every time you research a new technology from a new era, you get a new settler for free. I thought this would be a fun and interesting mod to make the game a little bit more dynamic and weird. We're also going to be playing with some non-standard settings, hopefully to encourage a little bit of different gameplay. We're going to be playing the Inca on Deity Difficulty with maxed out city-states of 18 on with 4 disaster intensity on a primordial map with abundant resources, new world age, wet rainfall and a high sea level. I'm hoping that this is just going to make things really interesting from a sort of terrain standpoint for the rest of the game. I'm actually not really sure that I can come up with a better starting location for the kind of game that we want to do here. The only downside is that this has stone on it, which means we're going to have to get rid of that. But this is looking like one hell of a starting location for the Inca. I'm not sure if I want to settle in place. I'm kind of tempted to move away, but at the same time, I think staying in place is like the objectively best move. There's like an incredible campus right here. You know what? I think I think I'm gonna just I think I'm just gonna stay in place and we'll see what happens. Although I really should move my warrior first. Just in case there's somewhere I want to move. Oh my god, the campus of dreams surrounded by volcanoes. Let's go ahead and found in place. We are killing a forest, but that's not a big deal. And we do stand on a plains hill, which gives us the two food to production. I think I'm going to try to do the triple holy site double campus into government plaza strategy that I've been working on. We're going to be opening up with astrology because the plan is to go for three holy sites into two campuses and then finally finishing off with a government plaza. Those of you who are watching my recent video on the district discount mechanic will know why I'm doing this. If you don't know why, check the card in the top right, all that sort of jazz. But basically what we're going to be trying to do is to get three campuses, which will allow us to get two camp or, or three holy sites, which will allow us to get two campuses and a government plaza at a discount of 40% for the campuses and 20% for the government plaza. Oh yeah, this this is definitely gonna be a Petra city, let me tell you. Can you imagine having Petra and hill farms on each of these tiles? Good god. Oh man, I really didn't want this to be a dead end. Ah, uh, it is one of these, I'm just gonna have to live with it. Kind of regret going for holy sites, because I just realized that I'm not gonna be able to build settlers with this mod, so I guess we're going for one anyway. Alright, so we ran into Spain. It's a little bit worrisome that he's so close. I will send him a delegation to try and keep him friendly. Um, but I'm not confident that he is going to want to be friends. Oh my god, look at this absolutely god-tier terrace farm. Five food, two production on turn 18. That is just crazy. I've got two active volcanoes right by me. Um, I put down some pins begging the Civ gods for them not to erupt and completely destroy all my terrain, terrain around here. Let's see if it works out. Oh, looks like I ran into Dido, who I'll actually be able to sell my second copy of Gypsum to her as well, and I'm probably gonna wanna pick up a delegation just in case. One thing to keep in mind is uh, even though I'm playing on Didi with a Settler mod, the Didi AI still gets two free cities on this mod. So yeah, they're going to be having a huge advantage compared to a normal game. First holy site is completed and it looks like nobody else is rushing for a great profit. So I think I have time to pick up my shrine. It's not like I can do anything else really. I mean, I guess technically I could have gone for the Stonehenge, but I don't think it's worth building it in this game. I figure we'll just do it the good old fashioned way, get a holy site and a shrine and then do a couple of holy site prayers to lock in a religion. Norway's on the this map as well and he's all the way down here so I'm not too worried about running into them or running into too many problems. I of course will always want to be taking a delegation with them just to make sure that they're nice and friendly and I wonder will they give me more money for this particular resource? They'll give me five gold per turn and Dido will give me eh, six gold per turn so I guess Dido gets the cheese. Can we take a moment to appreciate just how many mountains I'm surrounded by? Like this is legitimately a perfect Inca game but it's also completely awful because I've only been able to explore to the south. <laughs> And I don't really know much about the world other than the fact that I'm completely surrounded by civilizations who don't really like me that much. On the plus side, I am the Inca, so I can build mountain tunnels way earlier than people. So I'll be able to like teleport a unit from over here to like all the way over here in no time. Now, normally in a game, the religious settlements pantheon wouldn't be the top tier number one best pantheon in the entire game. But in this mod, settlers cost about a thousand production each. So I'm pretty sure this is just straight up the best one that I can go for. But it does present me with a really difficult problem because I'm not going to get my next settler until I unlock currency which is when you get your new free settler every era. 
So I'm kind of torn. Do I want to settle this coastal city first and then start exploring the water for maybe more land? Or do I want to settle the Petra city to get that developing so that I can build the Petra faster? Or do I want to forward settle towards my opponents to be able to lock in a little bit of extra land? That's a really tough decision that I'm going to have to make like right now. And I'm not ready to make that decision. I think in the interest of committing for like really nice yields, we're going to commit for the Petra city, especially since I can settle on the silver, which I can then sell to the AI as well. Settle on the silver. And now this city is off of fresh water, but it has some really nice advantages because it's closer to the mountain. It'll be able to grab some tiles across here. And I should be able to put a tunnel right here and make my way right over and start having a look and see what's over here. Also, by settling on the silver, I get plus three gold per turn without having to actually work the tile, which I can then sell to Philip to get a nice little boost to my economy. It's only six extra gold per turn but that adds up over time like right now we're making nearly 23 gold per turn which will allow me to purchase things like for example I could straight up just purchase a granary in this city and get it growing much faster and yes you are reading that right that is four active volcanoes within two tiles of Machu this city is going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble oh my god that's a plus six campus over there holy crap damn I need that like yesterday the really big advantage of playing the Inca is that we can build these tunnels really, really early. And not only that, but the error just changed. So that four error score is working towards me getting another age. And now I can get across here and chop this forest and then place a campus down here without losing any of the nice benefits from this tile. Here's a cute little trick for you guys if you're in your own games. If you just cancel this monument, you'll run into some issues. But if you start building a builder then swap out the monument and cancel it you won't run into issues then you can just cancel the builder chop the tile you want to chop and if you look here my campus is going to be built in 21 turns if i chop this tile bam now my campus will be built in 18 turns so i just saved a little bit of production off my campus and it's actually only 14 turns now by doing a little bit of clever manipulation of the uh you know unit production or the the city production line and in this way i can get my campus much faster than i would have otherwise had to and i can also preserve this chop and instead of just crushing it with my district. What's that? A one production desert hill? No, it's a four food one production desert hill because it's surrounded by three volcanoes. It's probably going to get obliterated by like one of these erupting at some point. But in the meantime, we have this really nice growth tile, which is pretty cool. And it also adds food to these uh, volcanoes so I could work them later on. Normally in my games, I would go for Magnus early, but because we're playing this particular mod, I think getting Pingala up and running early will be a really good way to boost my science and culture to keep up with the AI. Otherwise, I'm going to run into some issues because they're already making nearly 30 science per turn at least Philip is who kind of rushed science but I'm only making six so I need to cover that weakness ASAP and again if you didn't see that before basically what you do is when you have a tile you want to harvest and you want to put a district on that tile all you do is clear out the production tree make sure you're always cancelling a unit because sometimes when you have a building and you cancel it you lose the production in that building then you harvest the tile so 34 production and that will get immediately put into my campus this is a plus five campus and so we can build the campus one turn sooner. Well, it's probably like two turns sooner. And it, it's just a more efficient way to do things. You always want to be harvesting the resources that are underneath the tiles. You want to place the districts, even if it delays the district a few turns. Oh yeah, and don't forget to get open borders with every single AI who will let you. It improves your relationship with the AI and often they're willing to give you a little bit of value as well for it. Man, we're just racking up the error score right now. We got plus three error score from finishing our very first campuses because they have a greater than three adjacency. And that's really, really nice. Now we're up to 23 science per turn, which isn't quite up at the level of Spain right now, but we're at least beating some of the other AI. Now we need to work on our culture to catch up in that respect. We also just picked up our religion. So we're going to go ahead and found a religion this game. This will be the religion of please no Rupturino Papacino. Oh God, I forgot when you type a name in and then click on a symbol that gets rid of it. God damn it. <laughs> Jesus. One of my favorite beliefs is choral music because it allows you to basically completely skip theater squares when you're doing a science game supported by a religion. The other really nice thing is feed the world when you're playing the Inca because you already have tons of food, but by getting Feed the World, you can end up working a lot of those sort of bare mountain tiles. I think in this particular instance, I'm going to go for Choral Music just for that extra culture. I'm also going to take Church Property here just because I think it's one of the best uh, beliefs in this category. I mean, you could make some arguments for some of these other ones, but I really do think that Church Property is just like objectively the best choice in that category. 
Does anyone know why the UI does this sometimes? It like piles the yields on top of each other. It's really, really bothersome. And I, I wish I knew why it did it. Unlocking currency is a really good milestone because that is what triggers us to get our very first free settler. And I think it's about time that we snapped up this settlement location because the loyalty pressure over here is only going to get worse as time goes on. So the earlier we can get established there, the earlier we'll be able to resist that loyalty pressure. There's just something really satisfying about these terrace farms because they just give you so much food. It's actually really, really damn nice. Like, look at these. These two tiles. This one is five food, two production. And this one is five food, two production. That's ten food off of two tiles. Like, I don't know if there's any other save in the game that can get this much food this early. Even over here in Karsten, I can plug in even more food in this terrace farm. Look at that. Look, look at it. Look how much food this is. <laughs> Jesus. This city has a little bit of a loyalty problem, but we're going to take care of that because we don't have much money to, or we don't have much things to spend our money on. When we settle a city, we can actually get monuments instantly, which is going to help the loyalty in here a little bit. I do need to boost the population of my capital, preferably by harvesting this uh, food resource here up to seven population so that we can get our hands on a government plaza and actually sort of take care of that problem in the long term. One little trick is if the AI offers you a whole bunch of diplomatic favor in the early game, just sell it off to a different AI and you'll get a whole bunch of money that you can use on other things. Another useful tip is if you do have a city that's suffering from loyalty, get a monument and you don't have a governor to put in there, get a monument and then trade with one of your own cities, preferably for a bunch of food. In this case, I'm playing the Inca, so I get a crazy amount of food, but just make sure you trade with yourself. You get a bunch of food, the city will grow, the city's loyalty will increase because it's growing, and that means you'll have more time to actually save the city in terms of loyalty. Oh god, literally every volcano on the map just became active. Like, as I was looking at the turn end, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, like every single volcano just became active. I don't have enough pins to tell them all to say please no. Why did, why did I choose these map settings? What's wrong with me? How come no one else has volcanoes? Why am I? Why am I in Volcano Alley? You know what? It never gets old. Seeing terrace farms like this, six food, two production, hell yeah. Two really important, well, a couple of really important things just happened this turn. First of all, we can now build Machu Picchu as well as aqueducts. Now, if you remember, when you're playing the Incas, your farms, your, your, your terrace farms beside aqueducts get a huge boost to their production. If you see here, they gain plus two production for each adjacent aqueduct. The downside of getting Machu Picchu as Incas is that you usually want to put terrace farms next to your mountains. So even though I have it unlocked, I don't think I'm going to get it. In fact, somebody else already built it. So that kind of makes that decision much easier for me. I'm just going to throw down the government plaza here, there or anywhere just so that I can get another governor to plug into Sousa. Although already because I uh, plugged in here and got a whole bunch of food and grew the city, the loyalty problem isn't a problem in here anymore. I also made reference to the strategy that I'm using right now in my district video where I'm basically avoiding unlocking a few districts. Now I did go for holy sites this game. Normally I would avoid them, but I'm going to try to avoid unlocking the the encampment and the harbour for a little while while I head up towards picking up industrial zones and universities. I have to say this whole you can't build settlers thing does make the enemy's cities look way more interesting and it also encourages them to build much larger armies which I'm thankfully I'm holding off Dido even though actually I could get a friendship with her because she's kind of posturing as if she wants to declare war on me. So I'm going to see if she wants a friendship so that I can prevent any sort of preemptive war declaration on her behalf. Holy crap, she'll even give me 12 gold for this gypsum. That is uh, one of the best deals I've ever gotten for gypsum on Deity. We have accumulated enough faith to get our very first missionary. And I'll pick one up just to get my religion spread a little bit. I'm hoping that I can maybe get a couple of uh, the Phoenician cities converted as well just to put a little bit of pressure against Catholicism because I'm already suffering a little bit of too much pressure I need to just put a little bit of counter pressure to make sure that I keep my religion this is actually a really difficult choice this game as well I'm not sure if I want to go for the ancestral hall which will give me a huge boost to my settler production in combination with the card I'll get 100% settler production which would mean right now it takes me 45 turns to build a settler with a 100% production boost it would probably take me about 23 turns um, or I could go for the audience chamber, which will give me a ton of housing and extra amenities. It's really hard to make this decision. On one hand, settlers are really, really expensive. So a production boost towards them is really, really helpful. On the other hand, I'm not going to have a whole lot of cities this game. So maybe having cities that are just with more housing and amenities would be better. I think at the end, the best decision is going to be to go for the audience chamber. This in no way was influenced by anyone else. I made this decision completely on my own. I didn't run a poll in my Twitch as I was recording this video. Not at all. That would ne I would never do that. I would never, ever. 
ask for other people's opinion when I was trying to make a decision. Oh, here it is. The very first catastrophic eruption and six tiles were fertilized. Oh my God. Wow. Look at that. So many forests were just destroyed. But more importantly, there's a whole bunch of science and food around here now that I can take advantage of. Also, can we take a moment to appreciate how cool the fog of war smoke eruption effect is? Like this looks like something out of a comic book. You know what I mean? Like it looks like just frozen smoke. Oh Jesus. A mega colossal eruption just happened right outside Spain. Holy crap, I need some of those tiles, like, right now. Can you- wait, if I can get my hands on those tiles, those are gonna be so good for Eric Judd. I have the money to just grab them right now. And if I put some of those nice farms on there, wow. I need to get a builder over there right now. Time to start construction of the Petra Wet Dream in Karsten. It will take a little bit of time to finish, and we do have a couple of chops, so I'm considering moving Magnus over to the city to use up these forests for those chops. It's probably the best move. Let's go ahead and park him over here and then get ourselves a builder in here to help out the Petra. Wait, wait, why do these city states have settlers? Oh God, I need to talk to the guy who made the mod and get this fixed. Does that mean if I kill the city state that I get an extra settler? <laughs> what? Oh God, I have no idea what to say about that. Okay, so we're going to take a two food, three production, one science tile to be an eight food, three production, one science tile. Yeah, that's that's not that's not broken at all. That's perfectly balanced as all things should be. Check this out. We just finished an aqueduct in here and now this hill farm is five food, four production. I'm going to get a couple of more hill farms just to really show how much you can pop off with this. Oh my god, Dido went to explore to the northwest and revealed my campus to this goddamn barbarian horseman and now my campus is getting murdered. Thanks Dido, I really appreciate that. Since we just unlocked Apprenticeship, we picked up our fourth settler who will of course be heading down here to claim this land over here. I will eventually want to capture over here but I'm kind of, Spain is kind of taken over here and I'm, I think I'm going to have to run up this way to see if I can find more land and territory. Oh my god, we actually picked up a Golden Age so we have quite a few things that we could choose from. I don't think there's anything that really stands out to me that like really would help me because I need my faith to be able to keep my religion. Penbrush and Voice would give me a little bit of extra culture. I don't really have any commercial hubs and harbors. Monument Mentality would be really great just for the builder movement speed so I think that's what I'm gonna go for here even if it's not super great for my current situation. So ranged units are better and they are also 50% cheaper to produce using production so now might be a good time to maybe pick up a few extra units to go explore to the northwest and see if I can clear all this stuff out. God damn it the volcano over here erupted and wiped out my terrace farm that I built. Rest in peace little terrace farm. Normally this terrace farm would only give me plus one food, but because it's beside an aqueduct, it's going to give me plus one food and plus two production. Look at these tiles. These are like late game plains mine tiles. These are just insane, insane production wise. So Philip has captured Preslav. Now Philip doesn't have a very big or advanced army, so I'm kind of tempted to actually vote in favor of this city state emergency. Although I will have to check, is Dido friends with him? Because I'm pretty sure you can't vote against people you're friends with. Because if these AI, these other AI declared war on him as well, then we could do a hell of a lot of damage to Spain early in the game. And he's kind of my biggest competitor tech wise, at least so far that I can tell. So I think I'm going to gamble on voting in favor of this and then kind of gambling on being able to defend myself if it does pass. I don't know if that I'll actually be able to defend myself. It could, this could go really, really poorly for me. Oh my God, we have run into Alexander and uh, I'm pretty sure we're at war with Spain now. Who else is at war? It looks like it's me and Dido. And it looks like because I'm in the war with Dido, I get to see all of her explored. Oh my God, the world is basically empty and there's so much land to take advantage of over here. But yeah, now we're at war with Spain. I'm mostly going to be playing defensive here. I'm not actually going to be looking to advance into their territory. But this is useful because uh, maybe Preslav will get liberated and maybe Spain will get hurt significantly from this war. I'm having a really hard choice. Like, where do I want to put my like holy sites and campuses? Because I have incredible, incredible places to put them. But the problem is uh, they're also really, really great places to put hill terrace farms. I was going to put a, a terrace farm right here and I harvest the resources, but I think it's also adjacent to a geotherm. So I think the plus six campus is worth more than the plus six terrace farm. So I think that's how I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to be looking for where it's a really high value campus and then I'll put that instead of a terrace farm. Oh dear, it finally happened. I got my very own mega colossal eruption basically on the turn that I'm finishing Petra. Well, I'm one turn away. So Karsten got some pretty hefty damage. Oh my god, if I had known all this land was out here, I would have gotten an even more incredible Petra out here. Damn it. 
this would have been so good. I, but, I mean, how could I know, right? All I could see was this little bit of desert in the early game. It's too late now. The Petra's already done. But we might be able to do something interesting with this land over here. If I can settle around here and place a whole bunch of those hill farms. Okay, this one was just a gentle eruption. Petra and we finished the Petra. Plus two food, plus two gold, and plus one production to every desert tile within range of Karsten. Oh, but I didn't even realize that that works on geotherms. That's really powerful. That geotherm is now a workable tile. I am going to have to restore my... Uh, hill farms in here which kind of sucks but i'm gonna be doing that throughout the game so i'm not too worried about it i also need to get this campus restored and hopefully get like industrial zones up and running and stuff like that now i was gonna put my industrial zone on this tile right here in karsten but i realized that i didn't actually have my aqueduct finished so i could put it here and get a plus five adjacency or i could put it here and get a plus three i think i'm going to opt to get the plus five adjacency here and I might just put like a commercial hub on that tile instead. I was thinking that, the, that these were going to be equivalent. I was going to be like, hey, I'll get two. I'll get two from the aqueduct and one from each of these. But then I realized the aqueduct isn't actually finished yet. So a bit of a miscalculation on my part. So I'm going to put the industrial zone there. But I'm going to work on the aqueduct first. Okay, we are getting like a mega colossal eruption every single turn that goes by. I mean, partially I'm not complaining because it's making these really awesome tile yields. But on the other hand, I'm getting crushed by these horrifying <laughs> goddamn eruptions. What do you think? Do you think that's a... What do you think? What do you think? Do you think that's a um, uh, thumbnail worthy volcano screenshot? <laughs> I don't really have anything else to work on in my capital now, so I guess it's about time at turn 95 that I start actually building my very first settler. Now this is going to cost me about a thousand production, so it's unlikely that I'll finish this in a reasonable amount of time. But I'll just put a little bit of spare production into them, because I don't really have anything else that I need to build. Like, I don't need builders right now, I'm waiting for feudalism to finish before I get too many more. So I'll just put a little bit of work into a settler, so that we can make our way towards getting one finished. No! <laughs> Not both of my campuses! Oh, sweet Jesus. I just, well, I mean, at least five tiles were fertilized, but three of them were damaged, and all three of them were tiles I didn't want to get damaged. Both of my campuses have been completely obliterated. Guess I'm not building a settler. <laughs> and I had just started the library in here as well. God damn it. I'm starting to regret my choice to, like, fill the map with volcanoes. I, like, I feel like nobody else has the same level of volcano problem though. Like, look around, why can't... <laughs> it's just me, I spawned in like Volcano Alley. Oh God, I just discovered that I don't have volcano labels on. As if the map was already like not hard enough to read. Just having text everywhere. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's turn that volcano label off. Let's, uh, let's, in fact, let's turn off a couple of these things because I'm having trouble, uh, reading this stuff right now. No, not again. Oh, there goes my holy site. And the terrace farms that I just built have been obliterated. Although the tiles are fertilized, so I mean, that's something worth keeping in mind. My poor holy site got smashed, dude. Why? Why? Every, sing every single campus has been pillaged. Like, please, stop. I don't deserve this. This is way too many volcanoes. I just want to say that picking the Incas on a primordial map with disaster intensity for, like, yeah, it was pretty fun. Like, we, we see all these really nice yields. But on the, on the other hand of it, like, this is... I, I actually just can't get over how many volcanoes this is. And like every single one of them is active. This is just completely unreasonable. I mean, these volcanoes over here aren't active. I feel like I'm specifically being targeted by the game logic right now. And uh, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. For the love of God, it doesn't have to be every single turn. Does, I'm literally getting a volcano erupting all over my empire every single turn it's starting to not be funny anymore <laughs> jesus oh nice actually this extra piece of flatland and karsten will let me place down a pyramid now the other hand is i am gonna lose like a really nice tile and i think that's actually oh, man I, I think the pyramids is worth building here for the extra builder and the extra builder charges and i'm gonna need a lot of builders to constantly be repairing and rebuilding all my farms that are gonna die to all these volcanoes Oh no, I don't have enough, I don't, I don't have enough, uh, diplomatic, I need more influence, quick, somebody sell me some influence, Dido. And the reason I really, 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 really want to submit this is because if I can get it passed, I'll get a crazy amount of gold just fed to me by the AI. Okay, I voted in favor of declaring war on Harold, just kind of for a joke, really. Um, but it actually passed, so now I guess I'm at war with Harold and I'm on the side of Spain. Little bit of a weird one now, but good luck, Harold. <laughs> Jesus. I think he captured one of the city-states. I don't know which one it was. Oh, it was Lisbon over here. It's already flipping independent, so 
If I can just get a unit like in range of him, I might be able to get credit for this. Oh, nice. We picked up Hildegard of Bingen, who actually is pretty damn good this game because we do actually have some really nice adjacency on this holy site right here. I believe this holy site has five adjacency. That's going to give me an extra five signs per turn from that holy site, which is you know, I think that's a pretty respectable outcome. Oh my god, I was trying to walk my units through here, and they just got, like, lava erupted all over them. And it damaged my city, and it destroyed my campus. Again. Can I just catch a break? <laughs> can I just... Can I just catch a break and not have this happen to me? Good god. Now, I don't think it's worth it to go for reinforced materials here, even though I'm suffering like crazy amounts of volcano damage. If it was just one city and that city was really, really important, then yeah, sure, I would go for reinforced materials. The problem is basically every single one of my cities is surrounded by volcanoes. So I think my government promotions are just better spent elsewhere. Nice, there's the pyramids finished. That's going to give us a free builder, as well as every single builder we get from here on out having an extra build charge. And this guy couldn't have come at a better time because I really do need to repair all my stuff. I've also got enough faith to start evangelizing my religion. So I'm going to take a moment to swing back and pick up theology now so that I can grab a temple and then evangelize. I feel like this entire, like, this entire video could just be like a montage of cities getting absolutely wrecked by volcanoes. Machinery brings some pretty nice benefits. We get access to the Warak Ak, which is just a slightly better scout that can shoot twice, and the Crossbowman, which will allow me to finally clear out all the barbs that are running around here in the west. There's quite a few, you know, units causing me an issue. I'll get the Warak Ak first because I think they're a little bit better at just running around and clearing stuff out because they can shoot twice and they do the same damage as a crossbowman. They do 40 damage and these guys do 40 damage, as you can see. Shouldn't be a problem to clear out the barbs. I think there's a couple of barbarian horsemen to the north and then there's another barb cap here. And I think my next settlers will be uh, kind of swinging out this way. I'm kind of tempted to settle right here on this tile on the copper, put an aqueduct here and then put a whole bunch of farms around here. Although on the other hand, I could maybe do a slightly different configuration. I'm not fully sold on what I want to do just yet, but I'm kind of leaning in that direction. One little trick if uh, you run into the border control treaty is all you got to do is usually just vote for yourself twice and it'll pass in your favor. It's not a 100% guarantee, but I would say like more than half the time when I just vote for it twice, I win. Like, look, most people are just lazy and vote for themselves once because they don't really care about it. So if you just vote for yourself twice, now you get culture bombs on all your district completions. I'm actually kind of running out of places to put things. I'm not sure if I want to put my thing. I think I'm going to put my commercial hub all the way over here near the um, near the pyramids because I do want to get more trade routes out. In fact, I should probably have that already going. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that we actually finish that trade route down here. Amenities are starting to be a little bit of an issue as well, so I might have to get my hands on some amenities. Now, they're not like a huge deal. It's only hurting myself, my, my cities a little bit, but it would be nice to get that really nice growth and production bonus from having a lot of amenities. Also, I want to take a moment to appreciate that this tile is giving me three food and six production, and it's a goddamn terrace farm just because it's adjacent to two very very nice aqueducts you know what i think i probably could have gone for the potatoes uh, achievement this game but you know whatever we'll, we'll do that another time no the goddamn niter spawned where i wanted to put my industrial zone and i was just about to put it there and i only recently researched niter that is a kick in the teeth wow all right i guess i'll just put the industrial zone here to get the extra production god damn it i only just built these things I need to go back and repair them now. I mean, at least they're getting cool science yields on them. I, I'm not mad about that. I just spotted Isaac Newton in the uh, great person screen. So I'm going to run a couple of these uh, campus research grants so that I can secure him. Uh, great, great scientists like Isaac Newton are really, really important because he basically multiplies how much science you can get. Because what happens is when you get this uh, plus two science, right? It takes your university from giving you plus four science to giving you plus six. But really, really importantly, this stacks with the rationalism card. So if you have a population of 10 or higher, you will actually, instead of just getting plus two science from having, uh, you know, 50% extra bonus from buildings you will get plus three and then if you get can get can get both of these bonuses having 10 10 population and plus three adjacency you'll actually get 
plus uh, six science instead of plus four. So this is really, really important that you pick up stuff like Isaac Newton, as well as picking up city-states like Bologna, who will give science to your universities because it works with multipliers that you pick up in the civic tree, like rationalism. That's, if you're wondering, that's how I get really, really, really strong science games in pretty much every science game, because I'm always looking to stack modifiers together to get a really crazy output. I think we're about 120 turns into the game, which is about halfway through the game in terms of turns. So I just want to take a moment to do a little bit of a fly through of my empire so you can just see like how insane the yields are. In fact, I should do it in the empire map mode so you can see the adjacency on my districts as well. Now, don't mind, don't mind this commercial hub over here. It got pillaged by a volcano, but like, look at everything else. Look at these, look at these tiles, man. Four food, two production, six food, four production, three food, six production. Even these tiles are pretty damn good. Six food, eight food, three production, and one science. Plus six cap is over here, plus five industrial zone. I've got another industrial zone to place here once the city reaches 10 population. Plus seven food, three production, one science. My entire empire is just filled with incredibly productive high food tiles that are going to allow me to grow incredibly tall cities. It might also be a good idea over here in Florida Pro to pick up a few of these sort of outwards tiles so that I have a bit more room to grow in to. I'm especially going to focus on tiles that are adjacent to mountains and things that cut off my enemy from basically taking tiles from me. So I think that's good enough for now. I think that'll keep uh, this city from, you know, running out of room because Florida Pro is one of my later settled cities. So it's going to have a little bit less time than the other ones to actually pick up steam. Grabbed ourselves another Golden Age. I'm going to take Monumentality again just because it's nice to be able to move my builders around. Also, I kind of forgot completely to actually evangelize my religion. So I may as well pick up those apostles now. Oh, I just built these terrace farms. Why? Why does it got to be this way? I mean, it's kind of nice that I get the extra science and production, but still, <laughs> it's such a pain, dude. Evangelize our very first belief. Well, technically, it's our third belief. I'm really not sure what I should pick up here. I guess you could say I could either go for religious colonization or itinerant preachers to try and reinforce my religion spread. Although, if I'm going to do that, I may as well grab scripture. Yeah, I think I'm going to grab stup stupas or stupas or whatever they're called and scripture. So I'll grab scripture first so that I can spread my religion a bit better. And since I have that, I may as well pick up printing so that we can actually get the plus 50% passive spread which will help keep things under control. I was a little bit dubious about getting an aqueduct in this city but now that I'm thinking about it it is almost at its housing cap and the aqueduct would give it an extra two housing. Two housing isn't much so maybe it would be better to wait for a neighborhood though. Yeah I'm just not sure. I mean it would give me plus two production on this really really nice hill but it wouldn't really do much for anything else so I think I'll just wait until I have neighborhoods and then plop one down like right here for example. In the meantime I think it would be a good idea to pick up, a, pick up an entertainment complex. I don't really have a good industrial zone spot here so I think I'll skip an industrial zone in Eric Judd and we'll just go for the entertainment complex in order to get the extra delicious delicious amenities. Oh, come on, man. What? <laughs> Just like every single turn. Now, my capitals got absolutely obliterated. And it was really, really close to getting to where it needed to be to be able to place down its industrial zone. There's going to be so much repair work done in here. But I mean, at the very least, I can pick up Isaac Newton for just 400 gold now. So I'll make sure that I buy him because I, I can't run any more projects to make sure I have him. Also, I put this pin here because I was just kind of upset at volcanoes. I was like, why do you hate me? Jesus, uh, I am going to need to grab myself quite a few more builders now to repair the capital. So that'll be something we get our hands on as well. Also, have you ever seen a volcano worth so much food and production? That's two food, or sorry, four food, two production on a volcano tile. That's that's a pretty damn nice tile. Like, Florida Pro, on the other hand, I think it is worth it to put an aqueduct down because that's going to boost two of these terrace farms, and then I still have plenty of room for districts as well. And it'll give the city a little bit more housing, which will mean it can continue to grow into really, really large proportions. I'm also chopping out a whole bunch of these resources in here because I'm not going to need, need them in the long run. Oh my god, oh my god. Just every single turn. There's no escaping it. I, this is the most cursed game of save I've ever played. The good news is, thanks to the aid request that's running in my favor, I actually have enough gold to purchase a settler. And they're actually really, really cheap this era, so I probably should have been considering that 
as an option with the monumentality thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to promote uh, Magnus so that settlers do not consume a population because normally with this mod, settlers consume five population. So using Magnus is basically mandatory if you're going to get your hands on any settlers. If I can get enough faith by the end of this era, I might be able to purchase another one with faith or even with gold. But I am going to go ahead and purchase this settler with gold because there are a couple of nice cities over here that I would like to get my hands on. Isaac Newton is great because I literally only just finished this campus over here in Chukutio, which will be renamed after a Patreon in a moment. Uh, and now I'll be able to get a university and a library instantaneously, completely boosting me up over about 100 science per turn. And now we're, we're pretty comfortably in the lead. Most of their AIs are making somewhere in the region of 50 to 80 science or maybe 40 to 80 science. So I'm feeling very confident. Uh, I, I think it's a bit of a double-edged sword, the whole like I can't you can't build settlers thing. It feels like the AI does a really good job like in the very, very early game, but I'm not sure they're really handling it too well at this stage. Wow, I'm extremely surprised by this. The AI have actually fed me enough gold to purchase another settler just a two turns later. That's why aid requests are really, really important. You want to pass them for yourself because it's a really, really good way to catch back up with the AI if you are behind. And if you're ahead, it's a really good way to solidify your lead. So we now have plugged in the government merchant republic, which means it's time to really start amping up for a science victory. We've reached this sort of like late mid game. So now we're going to start plugging in things like natural philosophy and rationalism. We're basically rushing towards rationalism now. If we can get that unlocked, we'll be in a really, 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 really good spot to actually win the game very quickly. I am a little bit behind on culture, which is a bit of a problem because I haven't really been focusing on building my holy sites. So that has left me uh, with a very, very weak culture game. So that's something I'm going to want to rectify. I've even started building some holy sites, for example, down here in Florida Pro. But despite the really bad culture game, we're having a really good science game and we're even working on industrialization in the next few turns. I don't know if I'm going to get the three workshops to get that boosted, but once we can get these coal power plants online, we'll start netting ourselves a whole bunch of production, which will make up for the fact that the majority of our tiles in these cities don't actually have that much production because they're mainly focused around being um, terrace farms. For our tier two government building, we're going to work on the intelligence agency because that's going to give us access to spies and we can start stealing lots of money from all of our opponents. Time to start setting up some alliances so that we can get extra diplomatic favor. We shall take up a research alliance with Dido, a military alliance with Alexander, and finally with America, we shall of course take the economic alliance. Not a very popular option these days. Ah, oh, my poor holy site and commercial hub. What will we do about these guys constantly getting obliterated by this volcano? Oh, that's right. I just realized there's nothing I can do about it because I don't know how to stop volcanoes from erupting. Industrialization is finished and hopefully I was lucky enough to get my hands on some coal. There is some coal over here. In fact, it's right beside this industrial zone, which is uh, not ideal. But also from finishing industrialization, we actually picked up yet another settler, which is always pretty nice. I'm kind of tempted to maybe send them out into the far distant lands and see if I could settle a city on some of these islands. For example, I could settle near Halong Bay, for example. Although I don't think that's really what the Inca are strongest at. I think they're better off settling near mountains if they can. There's also a chunk of coal over here that I'm going to want to get my hands on. Ha ah, grief. I really don't want to settle over here, but maybe if I settle on the coal and aqueduct here, maybe it'll work okay. This city would literally just exist to grab that coal. It makes me really, really sad to kill this incredible terrace farm that's three food, eight production, but I think it's necessary to get this coal online so that I can actually run my coal power plants. We also, unlocking guilds is a pretty good milestone because it gives me access to the craftsman card that I'll plug in over the Republican legacy. And what that'll do is it'll give us a huge boost to the productivity of our industrial zones so that when we actually build the coal power plant, it'll give us a plus 10 production. So in total, this city will be getting plus 20 production from all of its adjacency and plus 20 production is a pretty damn nice amount. I actually talked about the whole industrial zone adjacency thing in another video. If I remember to, when I'm editing the video, I'll like have a link to it like in the description and in like the little card thing although by now i expect most of you guys have seen that but if you haven't i may as well just cross link my content you know what i mean this coal tile isn't nearly as satisfying as the three food eight production terrace farm but a one food seven production tile is pretty decent in its own right 
Oh, right. I uh, I completely forgot to get peace with uh, Norway. Let's just see. He wants to buy my nighter. Sure. Sounds like a good deal. I like how he had his hat on when he was angry with me. But apparently in Norway, when you're friendly with someone, you take your hat off. No. Why? I, I feel like 90% of the footage of this entire, entire video is just going to be me crying about my poor, like, terrace farms getting obliterated by volcanoes. No. No, I was trying to be risky with the settler. Do you realize these cost a thousand production each? No, please don't kill my settler. God, <laughs> no! <laughs> Why did I have to be greedy? They cost a thousand production each. I could have just walked it there with a boat and it would have been fine. But no, god damn it, man. I was like... If Dido got over there nice and safe, pff, it'll be fine. It wasn't fine. It'll never be fine. God damn it. I don't even want to... I didn't want to buy a boat because I'm trying to save up to purchase one more settler because I'm really, really close. Ah, oh, man. This is this is hubris coming to roost. I am real mad about myself doing that. Ah, oh, Jesus. Please, please, for the love of God. Please, for the love of God, don't capture my settler. Please. Ah! Do you know what the worst part is? Do you want to know what the worst part is? When a barbarian boat captures a settler, it fucking deletes it, dude. Like, it doesn't even capture it, it just fucking deletes it. I'm- I'm- I'm turbo mad right now. I don't think you could be madder than I am right now. I don't think it's physically possible to be less mad than I am right now. And you know- you know what the worst part about this is? I had units that are expendable, that I could have just scouted with. But no, I'm like, it'll be fine. Let's just send the settler on his own across an ocean infested with barbarians. It'll be fine. It's not fine, and you have to tell people that you're fine, but you're not fine, and it's not good. You know, man? This is this is what my greed gets me. Sure, I get to purchase another settler, but I, I purchased this settler purely off the back of losing this other settler. It's, ugh, man, it's like such a false economy. Look at this caravel running around in the ocean knowing that he murdered my settler and didn't even capture it for himself. He deleted it. He deleted it. Now, I am curious, because um, I do have a shipyard, right? I have a shipyard, and I also have Auckland. Does that mean... So, is this production going to increase? No, the production stayed the same, even though I have a shipyard in Auckland. That's interesting. So, I'm not really sure what that tells me, but... A Apparently, production will go down on unimproved tiles. We'll know for sure when we do the fishing thing. I'm not really sure how that whole shipyards provide plus one production on unimproved water tiles thing works. But it seems a little bit not perfect, I guess. Oh, there goes another campus. Yep, it's the same one over here getting hit by this volcano. Delicious. Delicious. So we have a fishing boat with... Plus three production. I improve it and it goes down to two production. Okay, so improved tiles do lose the production from shipyards. I had some people telling me they don't. And I never, like, sat down and tested it. So I feel like, man, I feel like so often people, like, tell me things about Civ. They're like, hey, potato, did you know this is the way this works? And I'm like, oh, really? Wow. And then I go and test it and it just doesn't work that way. And I'm like, why would you lie to me? Why would you tell me the, the, a falsehood? Well, I mean, I guess the consolation prize is I do have enough faith to get yet another settler. And I'm also building one too, so I've got three settlers on the way. And I wanted to get over here to try and grab these pair of coal here so that I can fuel my empire and just generally have more land throughout the world. There's also some pretty neat settlements down here that I could maybe get my hands on. Okay, this time I'm going to escort it with two of these, two of these Warak Axe and hope that's good enough, right? I think... I don't know, this isn't an ideal escort. Normally I would like to have a boat, but I can't afford one right now. So this is just going to have to do. It's, it's just going to be these guys escorting, okay? So I'll have the very first little Warak Ak. He'll be out in front. He'll be the scouting Warak Ak. So if I see a boat, I can just start running away. Why? Why? Why every turn? Why, why do I get plagued by these volcanoes? I just... I want to play a nice clean game of Civ. Oh, we actually got uh, Leonardo da Vinci, who gives me culture from my... Uh, from my workshops, which is actually pretty damn nice because culture is kind of what I'm lacking the most in this game. Picking up a little bit extra. Although, should I, do I have time to build the mausoleum? You know what? It's only a five turn build on the mausoleum. We're going to grab it and save Leonardo. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio over here. <laughs> so the, so I couldn't say that with a straight face. So that we can get two, uh, two um, culture from our workshops. Wait. 
That's illegal. You're not allowed to have a settler over here. Oh, if I had seen that, I could have declared war and taken it. Oh! Although I have an alliance with her, so I guess I couldn't have done that. Stop. Please. I'm getting two volcanoes erupting now. This is just unreasonable. This has gone... <laughs> this has gone beyond a joke. Like, come on. Just... Why don't some of these ones over here erupt? The ones that don't affect me. But it's always, like, just every turn. Something of mine gets obliterated. I feel like I'm playing, like, Civilization, you know, Hunger Games or something. Where, where it's just like, can the city survive? Ooh, which volcano is gonna blow? Stop. Please. Oh my god. Hi, ay 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 ay. Didn't I just rebuild these things, like, a few turns ago? I, I just need to have an endless supply of builders pumping out here. Nice, there's the mausoleum at Halicarnassus, which now has the added effect. Is this just... Like, is this just yield porn, the game, right now? Like, look at my entire empire. Everything is insane. I'm, I don't think I'm working, like, a normal tile in my entire empire. Unless you count the geotherm. Like, everything is modified or insane or has crazy yields or is using some special combination. But the, the nice thing about this is uh, the extra charge on Great Engineers is retroactive. So Leonardo de da Vinci will give me, or Leonardo DiCaprio will give me plus one... Uh, culture on my workshops. I have to actually force update the game's logic there and there it is plus one on my workshops Which isn't much culture, but considering how weak my culture is right now. That's a pretty big deal Yeah, somebody just said to me every tile is burnt and has PTSD But I mean at the very like at least it has a really nice yield like these aren't even improved anymore Because I just haven't found time to get a builder over there Spain. What are you doing? Get out of here. No, that's illegal Actually, I'm not friends with Spain I could kill this settler, although his settler would get kicked out of my land, so it'd probably be pointless. We did just hit a new era, so we did get ourselves another settler that we can start moving along. I'm not sure where I'm going to send this next one. I have one heading up here to claim this iron, or, or coal rather, up here in the north. And then I had another one coming down here, because this looks like a really nice place for an Incan city. It just looks generally interesting, because I could maybe settle like right here, aqueduct to there, get a whole bunch of really nice tiles. Or maybe even I could settle on the river, actually. Settling on this iron tile, then aqueducting to here, that gives me four terrace uh, hill boosted by an aqueduct. Yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to try to settle down here if I can. I'm really tempted also to declare war on one of these city-states and see if I can get settlers from them. It's a little bit of a design oversight from the uh, <laughs> from the modder who made this, but you know what? I think, I think it might actually be kind of fun to do. Let me have a look around and see if there's any uh, city-states that are kind of vulnerable and have uh, settlers hanging around. Here we go, the second use of Leonardo DiCaprio. And we can swing in here and take a little peek at the city's yields from workshops. Somebody tried to tell me that the plus one culture doesn't work twice. I can confirm I have pretty heavily researched basically everything that I say about this game. So it gets really old when people try to correct me about stuff that I know for sure works because I've tested it extensively. So don't, don't do that. Don't do that thing, okay? It gets old. It gets old real quick. I mean, in fairness, look, I, I'm not saying that I'm always right. But I would, I would err on the side of, I'm, I'm, usually I have a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about. Also, wait, oh, this isn't a hill. This is uh, the Eye of the Sahara, so no wonder I can't build a terrace farm there. There we have it. We ha the Enlightenment is fantastic for a science game because now we have rationalism. And basically every city in my empire has like plus 10 population and plus 3 adjacency bonus. So when I plug in rationalism over scripture, we should see our science yield... I'm not going to say double, but I'm expecting somewhere in the region of 50 extra science at the least. Okay, it was more like 40. So about 40 extra science is pretty damn nice. And considering we still have some campuses to build, and we can also extend that bonus by upgrading our level of friendship with Hattusa and Bologna, because the extra science they give you on your, their universities is actually multiplied by that card. Stop. This, this goddamn volcano is like perfectly positioned to cripple three campuses at the same time. Now, thankfully, it only killed my universities. But, you know, also thankfully, it killed my universities, which was like 40 to 50 science in a single turn, obliterated by these goddamn things. Each one of my universities is worth like 12 science, so I think killing all three of these was like, what, uh, 30 science? Just gone, which is not fun at all. 
why do, why do all the yields collapse like this into like a singularity of where all the yields are? I mean, I know this tile is giving me crazy amounts of stuff, but why does it collapse into this weird sort of everything is on the same tile thing? I don't, I don't understand it. Oh, right. I completely forgot to renew my alliances. That might be a good idea. That seems like it might be something worth considering, making sure that your alliances are still valid with everyone in the world. Yeah, you know what? Let's, let's get to work on that one. I mean, I tried to worship the gods of please no erupt arino papacino, but I don't think it really helped. In fact, the evidence is very clear. It didn't help one tiny bit because this entire game, I have just been flooded with lava. Like I said, the border control treaty is really, really easy to win. All you got to do is always just vote for yourself twice. The AI doesn't care about it. And so you just get free culture bombs. It's one of the most easy uh, world things you can win. And not only that, because everyone voted for themselves, you pick up a couple of diplomatic victory points. Like I'm not even trying to get a diplomatic victory and I'm currently in the lead. Oh, wow. I can actually get the, uh, the Ruhr Valley down here in Florida Pro. So yeah, let's go ahead and see if we can pick that up. That would be great. An extra 20% production in this city would be amazing. It will take like 22 turns. So yeah, it's going to take a long ass time, but I think it'll pay off in the long run. Time to cock block Dido by settling where she's heading. Also, I should probably grab myself a uh, person to guard this city from being in a bad shape. I'm also going to pop down a very nice little aqueduct right there. And uh, this city could use a bit of help in terms of getting these things online. So I'll probably just work on the aqueduct and then purchase a whole bunch of stuff over here with my very meager gold income. Oh my god, there's an absolutely god tier industrial zone right there. So if, if I settle on this Tundra Hill, aqueduct to here, and then industrial zone there, this is like the god tier industrial zone. Hell yeah, let's do that. That sounds like fun. Ah, <laughs> there's a little Spanish, little Spanish uh, pikeman in here who's caught and he's just getting rained on with volcano ash and lava. Why, why couldn't I think of the word lava? I was like, I was gonna say volcano juice. <laughs> why, why, who, who, what the f is volcano juice? Who, who, like, how did I forget the word for lava? I've literally been getting drowned in volcano juice this entire game. I swear to God, volcano juice is gonna be a thing from now on. God damn it! <laughs> oh, shoot, <laughs> volcano juice. <laughs> Stop settling here. This is my island. Stop settling here, Norway. This belongs to me. No, why would you stand there? Why would why would why would this crossbowman go where I want to go? This is the tile I want to settle on, man. I feel like the AI. The AI. I you know what, man? I need like someone to confirm because I feel like am I crazy? But every time I'm playing the game and I tell a settler to go where over a few turns, the AI will go and stand in that tile and troll the hell out of me. <laughs> I was going to levy this city-state so I could move that crossbowman, and it was 420 gold to make temporary control of all its military units. Nice. Why? Why? Stop. Please, for the love of God. I'm, I'm getting really tired of all this lava juice that's getting all over me. I just, it's not fun anymore. I just, I don't want this lava juice. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's uh, it's another aid request. So apparently I have 5,000 gold and I can just like purchase my way into having really good cities instantly. Ah, uh, great. That's awesome. Let's get ourselves a builder in here too. We may as well get the whole thing going to spend all that money to get this city up and running. In fact, I've got another city up here that I could do the exact same thing. Just get a granary and a monument and a builder. And now the city is up and running. Brilliant. I genuinely, genuinely believe this is like the 12th time I've repaired this campus this game. Wait, why is there a horseman still up here? And now I don't have any units. Oh my god. Why is there still a horseman up here? Who put this here? Stop, just leave me. All right, whatever. Okay, yep, next turn. Your unit has been captured by barbarians and a volcano has erupted, destroying your holy site again. Nice. Look at this guy. Thankfully, I do have a Warak Ak to deal with him and then I'll be able to capture the builder. Unless it goes into the water, in which case I'll probably just rage quit the game. Okay, it didn't go in the water and we just unlocked steam power. It didn't go in the water, so we're fine. I got my builder back. We're fine. We have a whole bunch of money that we can buy new things with. In fact, I should probably come up here and actually help this city out because it's struggling for quite a while now on its own. That's a nice thing about gold is it's basically production you can move around the map. Please, for the love of God, volcano gods, why have you forsaken me? I even made a religion in your name begging you not to erupt your volcano juice everywhere. Look at that volcano juice. My goodness, that is some that is some tier one volcano juice coming out of that mountain volcano thing why 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 is it every turn what like 
are there are there no volcanoes anywhere else i thought this was meant to be a primordial map where like there's volcanoes everywhere it really just feels like there's volcanoes on me like i've looked i've looked a lot there's not that many volcanoes elsewhere there's two on this whole island uh, you know what we're counting them we're counting these volcanoes I count like 35 to 40 volcanoes here. I actually lost count halfway through because I'm an idiot. But listen, there's a lot of volcanoes, okay? Leave me alone. Just inside my own territory, according to the search thing, I've got 23 volcanoes. And that's just the stuff that's inside my territory. Like a few of them are like right on the edge and they still affect me. So, I mean, can you imagine how many there actually are here? Probably a lot. Probably not that much more than 23, to be honest. Probably, pro it's probably around 30-something. 30, 30, 34. Well, I guess I could count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Looks like 12 extra. So 35 volcanoes within, you know, 10 to 12 tiles of my capital. Nice. Zach Marcello is starting to come along pretty nicely. It just finished its aqueduct, and now these hill tiles are really, really good. Three food, four production is pretty incredible for a city that was only settled a few turns ago. Enemy spy successfully sabotaged my industrial zone in Florida Pro. Because of course he did. Oh my god, that's just dirty. That's a 10 food, 1 production, 1 science terrace farm surrounded by 5, 5 uh, volcanoes slash mountains, mountains. At least, at least it happened in someone else's territory, right? Nope, god damn it. I, th I saw Spain's borders and I was like, yeah, look, Spain's getting volcano. Nope, it's my goddamn holy site and commercial hub getting pillaged again for the love of God. How can one man be this mad? How can one man be this frustrated by the system? Wait a minute, why am I getting like 11 food from these things? Wait, do terrace farms upgrade? Oh yeah, they get a lot better once you get replaceable parts. Holy, wait a minute, where's my really, oh my God. God, wait, these aren't nearly as good. Wait, why are these ones so good over here? But this huge group of them... Oh, I guess these tiles have been fertilized a lot by the volcanoes too. That makes sense. Wait, I don't have any flatland. Oh, I do. I have a... I, sorry, I, for a second. <laughs> I was going to panic there. I was like, wait, I don't have a flat tile to put my spaceport on because this entire map is just filled with hills and mountains. No, I have one. I have a, I have one flat tile that I can put my spaceport on. So that's, that's good. Although, is this even where I want to build it? Like... I mean, wait, what happened to the Ruhr Valley? Why aren't you building the Ruhr Valley? Oh, I require the factory. <gasps> oh man, I got to repair this. Oh, I guess I'll finish that too. Damn it. And uh, you know, when you make a little uh, terrace farm area over here, the, the desert doesn't seem so bad for growth, right? Like it's not amazing, but it's, it's workable. Like we can work with this amount of food and production inside a desert city. I just want to go to bed, dude. I don't want to... I don't want to play with these volcanoes anymore. It's too much. It's too much. No one man should be required to endure this. Wait, stop. My, why? Don't do that to me, screen. Good God. Rocket science is completed. Let's get to work on the spaceport in the capital. Actually, oh, it would have been a good idea to get Reina promoted. How many governor titles do I have? I have one available. I've spent 10. Usually I like to get Reina fully up. But it will take us a very long time to get the next three governor titles that we would need to purchase the spaceport so i'm probably going to do it old school style where we just build it by hand now that's also going to require some stuff also we managed to get ourselves another settler thanks to that what we're going to do is we're going to go into the capital city and we're going to basically take every single tile possible and essentially say to every other city that hey look this city is more important than you so we're taking everything i think i'm also going to start centralizing my trade routes over here so i don't have uh so I have a little bit of an easier time growing that city. Oh my god, no! No, 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 you're not allowed to build a river valley! No, 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 no! I'm not gonna get it done in time! No, I'm not gonna do it in time! How are you building that so fast? No! I was so close! I was so close to greatness. Can I get a great engineer? I would have to do so much. There's no way I get it in time now. God damn it, all of that river valley production just down the drain. <sighs> I can't even get a spy into this city to pillage it fast enough. I probably should have tested this earlier in the game, but we're going to test the hypothesis that you can actually get settlers from the AI. So let's see. Yep, apparently you can just straight up steal the settlers from the AI, which might have made my life a little bit easier had I done that earlier. But, you know, we're doing it now. It just so happens to be one of those weird little quirks of the mod that the AI has settlers. I think it's just the way that it's coded or something. I'm not exactly sure why, but I imagine it's just like give all capital cities in the game, you know, plus one settler when you research a new civic or, or tech from a new era. 
And uh, the consequence of that is that these little city-states have uh, a ton of settlers just hanging around. Oh, apparently I managed to get Toledo go independent and now it's actually flipping over to me. So I'm going to grab this city for myself, which is not a terrible city. Uh, it's pretty garbage, actually, uh, now that I looked at it more clearly. Yeah, this is easily one of the worst cities I've ever had flipped to me uh, using loyalty. Wow. Okay. Nice. Big empire of volcano you have. Hmm? Do I still have the culture bomb bonus? Yes, I do. No, I do not. I do not have the culture bomb anymore. Now, we only settled this city a, sh a, f a short few turns ago, and look at how much yields it has. This is three to four food on every single tile, with three to four production on every single tile as well. That just goes to show the power of the Incan Terrace Farm in conjunction with the aqueduct. More aqueduct you will make, hmm? Uh, when you move Liang, it does not remove fisheries. So, unfortunately, we did, in fact, lose the Ruhr Valley to Tyre. Nothing we can do about it. I feel pretty bad about it. I kind of wish I had focused on it. I thought I wasn't going to be competing for it, but I was wrong. And sometimes when you're wrong, you just got to accept that you were wrong. So we may as well just build a bank, get a bit of gold in here and continue focusing on getting this spaceport finished. Holy crap, look at that. That's a plus 14 university. And I really hope that's going to show the power of having really good modifiers and bonuses all stacking together. Like four, like a, a single university is worth about as much as a research lab at this point of the game, just because I'm stacking so many modifiers together. Whereas if you look at the uh, campus over here, this one doesn't have all the modifiers working because it doesn't have 10 population, nor does this uh, campus have a baseline adjacency bonus of three. So this university is only worth six. And that is just the power of getting all those modifiers working together. I feel like this happens way too often. I'll get really close to settling a city and then like an AI will swoop in and just take my spot, dude. It's so aggravating. Starting to fill out all the fisheries over here in the water to give Nuka-Cola Victory a whole ton of housing as well as really great tiles to work. Look at the science generation in here and a huge amount of that is actually coming from worked tiles, almost nine of it and then another nine coming from culture and uh, faith as well. Uh, speaking of Nuka-Cola Victory doing really, really great, uh, this volcano just erupted and completely obliterated every single tile in the city. Great. Just great. On the plus side, I did actually steal uh, three settlers from Antananarivo, which I'm pretty happy about. It's around about time we got our neighborhoods online. Now, most of our places are totally fine on housing, uh, but we're mainly looking forward to pick up a little bit more housing and more food from the food market. Because remember, the food market gives you three total uh, food worth three population. Essentially, plus six food is able to support uh, three population. I guess I'll just, I, I kind of wanted to put it over here for the plus six housing, but this is near a lot of volcanoes and it'll crush a really nice tile, whereas this is a slightly worse terrace farm. So I'll get rid of that one and it's still plus five housing. Setting up another couple of little cities over here. I'm not really worried about these cities actually ever being productive. These are more being set up just kind of for fun. I'm, I'm setting up like a pair of cities over here to be able to reinforce each other and make really, really powerful, uh, what you call them, like terrace farms. I believe as the young people would say today, I'm doing it for the memes. Why? Okay, at least this is like a pretty gentle eruption, all things considered. Oh, amazingly, we actually picked up Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein? Albert Einstein, who will give our universities plus four sides per turn. Now that's actually going to get multiplied by the rationalism card. So if we take a moment here to appreciate just how much science this guy is going to give us, let's park a bit here. If we take a moment to look at the campus in Landon, right? This university is giving us 14 science per turn. When I use Albert Einstein... The science that this gives us stays at 14 until we update it, and then it goes all the way to 22. So on paper, he was giving us four, but in actuality, he was giving us eight science per turn because that's getting multiplied by the rationalism card. And that is just how the stacking modifiers work together to allow you to get an insane amount of science in the late game. Look, I'm nearly making 500 science per turn. And the really important thing about when you're doing a science victory and you have a really large science multiplier is when you do the moon landing mission, which is all the way over here at satellites, you'll get 10 times your current science per turn as culture, which can skyrocket you from mid game, like urbanization, mass media, all the way up into your late game tier three government, and sometimes even beyond upwards as far as globalization it really depends on how much culture you've generated and how much science you've generated but you can kind of slingshot along by getting a really really strong science game 
One little cool thing you might not know about the Kapak Nan, or whoever the hell you pronounce it, is that actually it gives you vision of the tiles around it. So you can see, for example, even though I don't have any units in range of this, I can see every single adjacent tile to this improvement. And it's just a cute little, cool little quirk of it. So if you run into like your enemy's territory and pop down them, you can kind of see what's going on inside their territory. Although you will be giving them the advantage of having tunnels. So they can kind of use your tunnels no matter what. So it's something, something worth considering when you are using them. Very first spaceport completed. And now it's time to start defending it with our spies. We're going to send this over to Nuka-Cola because that's the place where we need to defend from. We need to defend both the spaceport and this industrial zone. And now we can finally get to work on the uh, launching of the Earth satellite. It'll take quite a long time, but right now the main barrier isn't production. It's actually getting enough science to get up to uh, Mars Colony and stuff like that. So I'm not worried if it's taking a while to do these things. Some people were wondering, actually, if the terrace farms get adjacency bonuses, and they do. They get plus one food for each adjacent terrace farm, so a triangle of terrace farms will get two food bonus each. So that's why I'm building a nice little triangle of terrace farms over here. I wonder if we'll be able to build the Golden Gate Bridge this game. The AI actually kind of likes to build this wonder, but I think it would be kind of fun if we could get our hands on it, because I've never actually built it. The nice thing is that it gives plus three amenities, and every single tile gets plus four appeal. Not that that matters too much, but any trade routes I were to send over this uh, bridge would get a huge boost to the gold income that they make. So evidently there was no chance that we were going to build a Golden Gate Bridge because it just got cancelled because somebody else finished it. I guess we'll just stock up on builders for the late game push for the side's victory. It's actually been a few turns since a uh, volcano has exploded. Oh wait, no. Tornadoes just ran through my entire empire. Never mind. I spoke too soon. I thought I was like, hey, you know what? It's been a while since we got a volcano eruption. And then a tornado sweeps in and removes every single tile improvement from here all the way over to like here. Jesus. Looks like James Watt is ready to join my empire. Now this guy is really, really nice because it makes all of your factories provide plus four production, which is pretty damn nice. And it also makes, uh, sorry, not all of your factories. Sorry, this is Nikola Tesla, not James Watt. I got my guys mixed up. Nikola Tesla makes one particular factory incredibly strong. And I think I'm going to be placing him in my capital. This is my most centralized industrial zone. So it's most likely to hit maybe one or two more extra cities uh, compared to the baseline. Especially since by using Nikola Tesla twice, the range of the city goes up to 12 tiles. And then if I can also get my hands on, is it Hong Kong or is it Mexico? Yeah, if I can get Mexico on my side, it actually goes all the way up to plus 15 tiles. That's 15 tiles in each direction. So that's a hexagon the size of like from here all the way to over here. So you can hit basically every city in a normal empire. Of course, this isn't a normal empire because I have cities scattered all over the world. But you know what I mean. Hey, there we go. The Earth satellite has been launched, and look at it go. Wow, what a great animation. Top, 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 top. Wait, I wasn't trying to... Wait, I was trying to say kek, kek, kek. Like, the... Listen, sometimes we say the wrong thing, okay? Many, many the hell was I coming from with the top, top, top? It really is quite a nice animation. Like, I mean, there's nothing to complain about. You see a rocket go up into space. All right, let's do the moon landing next. It'll take about 17 turns. I would like... Uh, Normally, it doesn't take this long. I guess, you know what it is? I haven't centralized all my trade routes into my capital city. That's the problem. Yep, that's exactly what's gone wrong here. I haven't moved all my trade routes to my capital, so I'm missing a huge amount of production. And I, I didn't even get the uh, the other really nice things in here that could have helped along, like River Valley and stuff like that. Oh god, I was trying to take a sip of my drink and Spain attacked me. <laughs> what the hell? Why? Why would you wait until now when I'm literally about to unlock uranium to attack me? Or wait, did somebody else declare a war? Ah, no. It, it appears Spain is literally at war with everyone. Never mind. Uh, I guess maybe they declared war on me and all my allies were called in? That seems like a reasonable assumption here. Well, uh, I never upgraded my units, so my cities do dog shit for damage. Literally 40 damage. Where? I need a crossbowman. Where's my crossbowman? I need to get him, need to get him upgraded. I need another 100 gold for a field cannon. Hey, Dido, you have money. Oh, I have all this diplomatic favor I've been saving up. Why don't you just give me, like, all of the money ever? How about, like, 500? 600? No, you give me 500. There we go, 600 gold. That should be enough to upgrade my crossbow. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, just for the sake of argument, because this comes up all the time and people act completely shocked by it, the amount of damage your city does in ranged combat 
is based on the strongest ranged combat unit that you have in your empire. Right now, that's a crossbowman, so my cities do 40 damage. If I upgrade to a field cannon and I head all the way back over to this city, you can see my city now does 60 combat strength damage. And if I were to upgrade my unit again, I would again do more damage, which is probably why I want to unlock the machine gun, for example, on the way to getting some nuclear power and so on and so forth, so I can nuke Spain a little bit. Time to go up to level 6 with Bologna and Hattu... Well, I already have Hattusa, but I'll go up to level 6 with Bologna. But just for the sake of example again, I really want to hammer home this whole multiplier concept. So if we look at the university, it's currently giving me 22 sides per turn. Now... Normally, when you upgrade Bologna to having six envoys, it would give my universities plus two science. I plug this in, it still says 22, but if I force an update by reworking a settler tile, it only goes to 24. Hold on, is that part not multiplied anymore? Am I crazy? Wait a minute, did they change how the math works? I was pretty sure that used to get multiplied. Am I wrong about something in Civ? Oh god, delete the footage. Wait, where did this guy come from? Hang on, how did you get in? Oh, he used, he, they're using the tunnels against me. No, why did I build so many tunnels? Oh God, uh, I kill it. Wait, why won't you shoot? Shoot, shoot at man. Do the shooting thing. You cannot shoot him? Why no, I don't understand. You, sh you should be able to shoot this man. It's in range of the city. Oh, right, I have to do the voting first. <laughs> Listen, delete the just delete everything. Delete all the footage, okay? Don't tell anyone how I live. Oh hey, I think they actually fixed how the um the diplomatic victory points work because the AI voted to give diplomatic power to someone even though I have more than 8 diplomatic points. So that's actually a hidden fix I think in the latest patch because previously when you had about 8 points they would start viciously downvoting you. And I thought that was still how it worked. So we might even get a chance to see me actually play a diplomatic victory on this patch because the reason I was avoiding it is because it was kind of a pain in the ass. No, they're stealing my builders. They're using my tunnels against me. Stop it. Stop. It's not allowed. All right, uh, run! <laughs> There's conquistadors everywhere. Oh my god, they're just pillaging and murdering. It's a literal onslaught. Let's uh, let's let's start some unit production here. That might be a yeah, uh, yeah, might be a good idea. Ooh, I could get some spec ops if I wanted to, or uh, you know what? Let's just get a machine gun or two. Yeah, it seems fine to me. Why? Why won't this guy shoot this guy? Very clearly, I'm clicking the buttons. It says, look. I click on this, and then I click on the unit. Nothing happens. Shoot him! Sh shoot the man! Shoot shoot this person! I bet you'll shoot this guy. Why won't you shoot? Sh stop! Shoot someone! Why? Steal the builder? Go back into the city. Shoot someone. Okay, now it worked. I, what? Okay. Alright. Alright, yep. Seems legit. Pro tip for those who want to know how to get their game seed, all you got to do is go to the exit menu up here in the top right and then hover over the game version right here. And you can see there's your map seed and your game seed, although you will actually also need to make sure that you have the same settings or you won't get the same start. I feel like I feel like my uh, units are like ninjas. I could just pop out anywhere and shoot people all over my empire. It's like, sure, they get the drop on me and they're able to do like bad stuff to me, but my units can just pop out of the fog of war and be like, surprise, mother effer and so on i don't want to say that word i'll get demonetized so we are three turns from finishing the moon landing so what we're going to do is we're going to go to every single city in my empire and tell it to run campus research projects because a side effect of running a campus research project is that the amount of science that a city generates increases and your science per turn when you finish the moon landing is multiplied by 10 and then applied to your culture. So if you run the project in every single city that can, as you complete the project, you will get a ton of extra culture. Nice, I just killed a, uh, whatever you call these field cannon army over here. Like the really cool thing is my units really can't just pop out anywhere and then shoot them as they run around. Like this is what I was talking about when I, like, I was saying my units are ninjas. I used to have a ton of units inside my borders causing me issues. Now where are they? They're all dead because I killed them with my ninja machine guns. Oh, Alexander's been a very naughty boy. He has basically obliterated America over here. In fact, America's on its last legs. Only three cities remaining as far as I can see on the entire map. 
Uh, good luck, America. Hopefully you can pull out a win. Uh, unlikely, but good luck. Wait, I don't remember settling this city. Where did this city come from? Did this flip independence to me? Wait a minute. Where's the alert? Oh, Philadelphia. Wait, I'm, I'm certain I didn't settle this city. Hang on. Did, did Dido settle the city? What the? Like, I, no, genuinely, I didn't settle the city. I, I did not. <laughs> I did not settle her city. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's uh, swiftly move on from that bad joke. Yeah, it looks like he'll give me peace with about 40 gold in the mix for it per turn as well. I'll take that deal. We're about to finish the moon landing and we're making 700 science per turn. 700 multiplied by 10 is uh, 7,000. So we're about to get 7,000 culture, which should be enough for us to get all the way to communism, which I think is the best government type if you are going for a science victory. Also, it's also the best government type in general comrade uh but after that we're gonna be heading over to cold war <laughs> and then up to globalization to get extra production from our trade routes and there we go there is the moon landing we're gonna get a huge boost to our culture we'll instantaneously finish ideology and we should be able to swing in and grab ourselves communism in a single turn like i said and there it is one turn on communism beautiful this will give us access to the collectivization uh policy as well which we'll be plugging in as well as a whole bunch of uh, nice extra cards because right now we're running pretty slim on uh, the whole cards thing but this this should work out just great for us and with the advent of that we should get to work on launching the mars colony it'll take about 18 turns which isn't that much uh hopefully we can maybe pick up a couple of those late game ai or, or not ai sorry great engineers who will speed up the whole process we're in a science victory, we will, hmm? Apparently, the mountain tunnel makes the uh, Kapak-Nan obsolete. I'm curious, can you actually use them together? I think these count as individual improvements. So I can't go from a mountain tunnel to a Kapak-Nan, but I can go from, like, a mountain tunnel to a mountain tunnel. That's a weird quirk of the game system. There is class struggle. So let's go ahead and plug in the communist government form. The really nice thing here is that it gives plus 10 science across your entire empire and this modifier i believe applies up here in the top left and we'll talk about the consequences of that in a moment no it's actually uh, per city sorry i got that mixed up but the really nice thing about this is we shall be able to plug in some really nice cards like for example collectivization we'll also be plugging in a five-year plan normally i would like to plug in some other extra stuff for example economic union but these cards are going to have to do for now i would also like to plug in a couple of extra military cards because you know i may as well like logistics is nice for moving builders around drill manuals is nice for having spare coal we don't have that many coal power plants this game so we don't need that many of them i also don't really see a particularly good uh, military card here I suppose I'll just make do with what we have plugged in. Uh, no, you know what? I'll, I'll put in propaganda so if we go to war again, we won't take as much war exhaustion. So now you can see we're making 790 science per turn. And we're going to be making our way up towards... Uh, there's a card here. This one, International Space Agency, which will give me a 5% boost for every city-state that I'm suzerain of. Um, this is a very unique uh, modifier because it applies after all your other modifiers. So for example, here you can see I'm getting plus 25% science from modifiers. This modified, right? So this would be 121, uh, 100, or, or sorry, I'm getting 25% modifier, but the extra science from the suzerainty is applied up here in the top left. So basically, if I get a 10% boost from that suzerain card, I'm actually getting 12.5% because this modifier down at the bottom here is also getting multiplied by 10%. It's a little bit complicated, but basically, if you could get 100% uh, science from that card it would essentially be modifying every single modifier that you have like this 25 percent it would bring it up to a 50 percent boost uh, uh, like in terms of its effectiveness i might have to do it like a, a mini video on explaining that because it's a little bit it's like it's actually very simple but like it's difficult to explain without like like a, a, a slightly more in-depth explanation of it a lot of people don't understand how stacking modifiers like work together to create these huge yields. It took us a long ass time, but we have uncovered the Exoplanet Expedition. Unfortunately, my production has been so weak this game that the Mars colony isn't done yet, which is going to significantly slow down my game. But we are finally into the final hurdle. This will be the sort of home stretch on finishing up this game. All we got to do is finish the last few projects and we actually have three spaceports finished normally i would only build one spaceport but my production was so poor in my capital that i decided to get some extras i'm also going to need to get more trade routes in my capital i would also like to get my hands on like for example a um what you call it a neighborhood here because the city needs to grow more but i'm going to just keep pumping out traders for now 
Time to make a dedication for our next Golden Age, and I'm not sure which one I think. Hmm, maybe I should take Heartbeat of Steam, which will give me production equal to the science adjacency of all my campuses. Well, I guess all my campuses have a really huge science adjacency, so this seems like a pretty reasonable one to take. I don't plan to go to war with anyone, although if I really wanted to, I could start nuking Spain, because I am... I do have uranium and I could build nukes. That'll take a long time to get up and running, though. I'm not really making much use of, of, of spies, so I think Heartbeat of Steam is the right move here. It'll give me a whole bunch of extra production across a bunch of my cities here. In fact, you can see that plus 10 from campus is really, really nice. And in fact, I've already brought this city up to 120 or so production, mostly because I'm getting a whole bunch of extra production from the population as well. And I have a couple of nice little modifiers uh, working in my favor in terms of the coal power plants and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy with the production of Landon, although it is actually fairly slow. And you know what? Oh man, I can completely forgot that I need to get my hands on the Royal Society. I'm going to work on the Royal Society now that we have communism and I'm actually going to cancel all the trade traders over here and start pumping out builders in this city so that we can start feeding builders into my science projects to get them done faster and in fact basically every city I'm going to get the traders over here but basically every city that doesn't have a spaceport is going to produce builders to send over to uh, improve my science uh, my spaceport projects. Holy crap, look at that. 15 food, 6 production, and 2.5 gold from a single trade route. Just because I'm playing the Inca and I have a whole bunch of bonuses towards internal trade routes. In fact, this city is already at its max population, which gives you like a minus, uh, where is it? Yeah, a, a minus 75% growth modifier, and it has a minus 15% amenity growth modifier. And it still has a surplus of 18.2 food per turn, which is ridiculous. If I could take care of the amenities and the housing in here, this city would literally be filled, filled to the brim. From the earth to the Exoplanet Expedition is now unlocked, although we do still have to wait for Royal Society to finish, and unlocking that actually got me another settler. I'm not even sure what I really want to do with this settler. I think I'm just going to plop it down over here somewhere and get it out of my get it out of my sight and out of my mind. But uh, I think I think so far I'm pretty happy with the settler mod. I, I would maybe like to see the city state thing where they get a bunch of settlers fixed. But I think this this is an interesting mod. It made the game different because it meant I couldn't expand and get settlers early, and I had to figure out a way to get those settlers. And I think it made the game more interesting because I had to figure out essentially how to survive and claim land without being able to actually make or expand naturally and i had to kind of figure out how the hell do i get enough science to get to the next era to get the extra settlers and stuff like that and i think overall it just made the game more fun um i don't think it would be a kind of mode that i would play all the time but as sort of like a how would i how would i describe it it's like a mutator right it's a, it's a kind of it's a game mode that you would plug in when you're looking for a more interesting experience or you're a little bit tired of the vanilla game and you don't want some huge overarching mod these are actually the kind of mods that i really like where it changes just like one or two little mechanics that kind of really deeply affect how you play like for example one could be builders are like extremely cheap but they only get one charge like that would be an interesting way to do the whole um, to do the whole uh, mechanic. One mod that I had a really, really interesting idea for, and I would actually, I'd actually like to maybe see if someone could figure this out, is what if we just got rid of builders completely and like every improvement you build in the game was a district. So like if you build a farm, you like physically place down like a green farm district and then that has like worker slots and it kind of depends on the terrain it's built on. I don't know. I thought that would be a really cool mod. Like, I mean, the mod is really cool, but th this feels like a little bit too much. Like, can you imagine this in a multiplayer game with this many city-states? And someone was just like, you know what, I'm just going to declare war in Hattusa and literally get five free settlers. And every single city-state just has settlers sitting around. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a cool idea that maybe, like, a, a, a city-state would spawn settlers, like, every three eras, and maybe you could buy them off them. But uh, just like declaring, like if I, were to, if I were to buy a unit and declare war in Kabul here, I could settle like five more cities, which is a little bit crazy. But I guess, I mean, it's super late game, so it doesn't really matter that much. Any city that is not in range of my spaceports to make builders to feed into my spaceport projects will just work campus research grants or be building science buildings. This is uh, something that's really, really important. A lot of people, when they're playing, they tend to be like, why is it taking me so long to win? I mean, this hasn't been the fastest game ever. Although I am on a pretty fast track, considering that I basically wasn't able to expand early in the game. But people often ask me, like, how do I efficiently win? And it's like, 
just don't build things that you don't need to. It's really that simple. Like, if you don't need a encampment, don't build an encampment. I find a lot of people, when they're playing the game, they tend to just kind of wander around aimlessly and just kind of build stuff very randomly. And they don't actually, like, hyper-focus in on what really matters towards them actually winning the game. And oftentimes, what matters towards them winning the game are like building things that directly contribute to your win condition. For example, if you're going for a science victory, you're going to need science, production, and gold. Those are the things that you're going to need. You're going to need a well-built government plaza. You're going to need spaceports. So build those things. I find a lot of people when they're playing, and I, I started to do it a little bit, just kind of because I, I, I've played the game so much that I can kind of screw around a little bit. But ju just focus hyper hardcore on the thing that you're supposed to be doing. Like I see questions like, how do you win a religious victory? Well, it's like the only yield that you care about in a religious victory is faith. So make holy sites and uh, get as much faith as possible. That's it. That's your whole guide. You know what I mean? And then make missionaries and go, you know, and like, it's really that simple. And it's the same for tourism. It's like, people are like, how do you win a tourism victory? I don't know how. And it's like, just make things that give you tourism. And I, it, it seems like one of those like, uh, you know, uh, Counter-Strike or, or CSGO things, just like click on their head, forehead. And it's like, yeah, you just you just click on someone's head and you shoot them and they die. It's the same thing. If To win a tourism victory, just get more tourism. <laughs> like, like figure out how you get more tourism and then do those things. Domination victory, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated because you just have to actually, you know, make units and then attack people. No, I didn't want to put a mine there. I was on autopilot talking to... God damn you. YouTube, I blame you for that. Another thing, actually, another tip that I, and I, 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 I actually say this one pretty regularly is people are all, always like, oh, how do you get through the boring late game? And it's like, just tell your cities to do a whole bunch of stuff that you don't care about. Because often in the late game, your win condition is dependent upon like four or five cities. So if you're sitting there micromanaging like 12 of your cities, you're wasting your goddamn time. You know what I mean? So don't waste your time and, you know, make your decisions quickly. Don't him and haw over a city that you settled on turn 260 about what building you're going to build. It doesn't matter. Just click on anything and get to the cities that do matter. Now that we have the Royal Society completed, I can start inserting builders into these spaceports to speed them up. About one builder per turn is what you can manage, and it'll speed it up by about one turn. And uh, so you just have builders constantly parked and ready to go. I also built a few railroads so I can move my builders around a little bit easier. I don't know why I'm building the Manhattan Project. I probably should have cancelled that in favor of getting more builders. And I kind of just have a military engineer running around building railroad just for fun. But we are getting very, very close to our win condition now. One thing I will say, it's actually been a while since a volcano has, like, actually genuinely caused me a problem. Like, a couple of them have erupted, but it's only really damaging, like, a holy site. Nothing too dangerous. I don't think I ever got my, uh, warship building, by the way. I kind of just skipped that, and I have six, 7,000 faith hanging around. Like, maybe I should have done something more with my religion, but I mean, like, what else am I going to do? There didn't really seem to be much I could do with my faith this game. I, I've kind of just been saving it in case maybe there's, like, a great person that I really want to buy, but I haven't seen one that I really want to buy that I couldn't just get just by waiting. I don't have any archaeological museums, I don't have any artifacts, I don't need the science, so I'm just going to delete Mary Leakey, even though Mary Leakey is actually one of my favourite great scientists in the entire game, especially when you're going for a tourism victory, I just, you know, I don't have a use for her, so I'll get rid of her. Kind of, you know, mafia style, you know what I mean? Let's take care of her. So, uh, time to insert the very last builder into this project and get the launch of the Mars colony. Excellent. So we got plus four error score and we can begin the exoplanet expedition. This will take another few turns to take about 15. But with builders being inserted into the project, it should be significantly less. And also, we should be getting pretty close to unlocking the extra missions that will speed up the exoplanet expedition. And we do have three spaceports that will be able to pump out, uh, you know, extra parts to speed that up as well. Dido appears to be trying to win a culture victory, which seems a little bit silly, silly considering she has about 300 culture per turn. I guess she's kind of in the same boat as me. She's like, well, I have all this faith and nothing to do with it. So she decided to uh, basically run a concert in my two most insignificant cities across my entire empire instead of like, you know, over here where it matters. Oh, there actually is a rock band over here. That's nice. Nice to see that their uh, rock music and uh, blue jeans are making an impact on my people. Like I said, all you got to do is every turn, make sure you're inserting a builder into your exoplanet expedition and it'll cut the time by roughly half of your normal production time. End of turn rave. It's, 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 it's. How many people are getting seasick right now?
Took us a long ass time because the off-world mission was basically one of the very last technologies that's available in the game. But we will be able to pump up the volume on our light years uh, going forward in the Exoplanet Expedition. Once it's finished, I do need to get another builder inserted into here. But boop and it's down to six turns. So we should be getting pretty close to the winning condition. Winning condition? Um, I, I, I can't speak. I've been playing this game too long. Also, another thing, like, I actually just don't care about any of these things that go on in here. I mean, I may as well vote for myself, whatever. Give me diplomatic points. Just, like, just get through this. Like, but that's, that's the biggest barrier to you enjoying the Civilization VI late game is yourself. You him and haw, you f flute about, you don't make your decisions quickly. You're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Just do anything. Like, you're already winning. Just win the game. You're fine. So you don't need to do anything. All right, apparently I can make nuclear bombs, which is kind of a waste of my time, but it's fine. We'll, uh... We'll finish the off-world mission here in a moment. Sorry, not the off-world mission. This is the Exoplanet Expedition. And it'll be done in about eh, probably two to three turns at most, depending on how many builders I insert into it. And uh, then we can start finally, at long last, winning this game and getting out of this volcano-infested hellhole that we find ourselves in. One turn left at long last. It's finished. And then we've got to wait another 50 turns. Yikes. Exoplanet expedition complete and off it goes into space. Wait, I, I wanted to see the missile. Oh, you can't see it if you exit the movie. Whoops. Uh, so uh, now that we have completed that, it's time to head down here and basically just queue up these uh, terrestrial laser stations and stuff like that to be able to get them finished. So I'm going to come on over here. Oh, I have no aluminum, so this is going to get pretty expensive on the power. And basically everywhere we can, I may as well finish that builder actually, everywhere that we can, we shall get to work on the terrestrial laser station. And everywhere else, we'll be building builders. Uh, probably should start getting work on builders here because you're actually in range to help out. So we'll start popping out builders here pretty slowly, I might add. But every builder counts because it might shave a few turns off our win condition. Let me just click on future tech and wait as well. That's pretty much it. Uh, otherwise, just, you know, click on random stuff and hope the game ends soon. <laughs> ah, get me out of here. Aluminium. It's aluminium. Americans are wrong. It's aluminium, goddammit. How dare you? There's people in my Twitch chat watching me record this live who are saying that's aluminum. It's aluminium. And you won't ever change my mind on that fact. So now we can just go around and insert builders into basically every single one of these projects to uh, get them done that much faster. I will fight any man who says that it's aluminum. It's aluminium. It's aluminium. Uh, now they're saying Americans discovered aluminum. Uh huh. okay. Americans discovered it. <laughs> you know what? I discovered your mom. Can I call her whatever I want? Got him. Globalization. Very nice. So we are going to be plugging out the Diplomatic League card and we will be plugging in the... Uh, da -da -da. Actually, I don't need the International Space Station anymore, so I may as well plug something else in. Like, I may as well get a bit of extra gold because I can use that gold towards purchasing builders too. And then in the other case, I actually don't need science anymore, so I can get rid of rationalism and instead plug in e-commerce, which will give me a huge boost to my production and gold from my trade routes. As you can see, I'm up to 200 gold per turn and my capital city is pumping out about 166 production per turn. I should probably have gotten a neighborhood in here because this city, if it had a little bit more housing, it could technically work more production. Can I actually get a decent neighborhood in here? Oh, wow. Yeah, I could get a plus six neighborhood here. Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. There's the very first terrestrial laser station firing off and we are how many turns away from winning the game? We have currently traveled three light years. We're traveling two per turn. And uh, we'll, once we finish this neighborhood and a couple of more of these terrestrial laser stations, we shall start to see the speed of our expedition grow exponentially. That's a lot of X words in a single sentence. It was actually difficult to navigate my way through that with a lisp. You see this great scientist? This great scientist that gives me extra science from rainforests? I'm too lazy to even use them. Delete it. Get out of here. You're not, you're not, you're not useful to me at all. Another cute little trick that you guys can use. Let's say I wanted to build the food market, but I also wanted to insert this builder into this project. I can't do both unless I go to my city's production queue. I move the terrestrial laser station to the top part of the queue, and then I use the builder on that, get a whole bunch of production towards this, and then move it back down, and I can work on the food market while also still being able to put builders towards the terrestrial laser station. This works with all sorts of stuff like the Aztecs' ability to build districts with their builders, and basically anything you can insert a unit into, for example, wonder production with some great engineers and stuff like that, you can do it with this uh, project thing, this technique. I don't know what you would call this. Another test, another testicle laser station, a terrestrial, another terrestrial laser station has been fired off. 
<laughs> and we are we're traveling three light years per turn we have moved nine light years in total my god a testicle laser station i wow okay all right let's uh <laughs> let's launch another testicle laser station oh unfortunately this camp has got volcano juice all over it nice Oh, ah, there's another testicle uh, laser station. Uh, that's what they're just called now. That's what I call them. Uh, you can't make me. You can't make me change. This is what they are. No the greatest fun. part is I can claim that I have a speech impediment because I have a lisp. It's just like terrestrial is too difficult to say, so I say testicle. Why are you? Why are you bullying me, bro? All right, just leave me alone. All right. It's. It has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I'm like a juvenile uh, internally, <laughs> in my own mind, and I find that your mom jokes funny. It, it has nothing to do with that. Wait, in this entire game, nobody took control of Hong Kong? I've just been sitting out on 20% production boost towards my projects this entire time. I can't believe I didn't even think of that. That would have been huge for this entire game. How did nobody take control of Hong Kong? Where is Hong Kong? How has nobody decided that Hong Kong was worth spending time or money on? I, don't, I really don't understand. I, don't, I just don't get it, man. A space race project has been completed. I wonder how far along we are now. Let's have a peek. We are traveling five light years per turn and we've done 20. So that means we are six turns away from winning. And in the interest of maybe being able to shave a turn or two off, we will continue to launch terrestrial laser stations. Also, I'm basically burning all of the coal in the entire world to do this. And the world has begun to flood significantly. But that doesn't matter because I'm going to be on the first space station out of here. Space station? Uh testicle space launch thing whatever they're called you know the ones the, 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 I'm leaving the planet all right so I don't care what happens to it I suppose technically somebody in chat just pointed out that I have already left and technically there that's true technically I have already left but somehow I'm light years away and still commanding the empire so you know magic powers perhaps the very final testicle laser station that we will be launching into the space because we are exactly one turn away from winning we are traveling nine light years per turn we have six more light years to go so if i hit shift and enter that should be our win condition well and truly established we just have to wait until everyone else gets a chance to take their turn there we have it there's a victory Much condition we're not going to watch the movie because we've seen it about a million times one interesting little graph that i always like to show you is the buildings graph you don't have to always beat the ai in buildings the other one i like to show is the player science you can see here i was definitely ahead for the majority of the game let's go ahead and do a just one more turn here because i want to take a moment to thank all the patreons who support my channel so let's go ahead and go into this mode and then begin cycling through the cities the Patreons who were lucky enough to get their names named in this city were Landon Karsten, Florida Pro, Nuka Cola Victory, Eric Judd, Kyle Head, L Lai, Eli, I don't know how to say that. And then there was M mm, OK. We've also got Bonus Meme. That was just the city that I named because I ran out of Patreon names. And I, there's Rockleaf. Veilute, we've got Koobs17, as well as Peemster, as well as Zach Marcello, and Mr. Slinky Slinks, Volley, Moxbox, and Astro Wizards, Mom. <laughs> All right, uh, then we got Tyler Davidson and Tyler Johnson. I decided to put these guys on the same island because they both had Tyler in their name. But that's it. That's all the Patreons. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. If you do want to get your name on the name list for cities to be named, uh, make sure you go ahead and check out my Patreon. It only costs $2 a month. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Let me know what your ideas are for a new series, and bye-bye.